Welcome to the Let's Fix Construction podcast. Let's Fix Construction is an avenue to offer creative solutions, separate myths from facts, and erase misconceptions about the architecture, engineering, and construction industry. One, two, one, two, three, four. Let's fix you and me Every broken thing that we can see All the pain and all the misery Let's start tomorrow Let's join your Let's Fix Construction co-host, Eric Lucier. Hello, everyone, and welcome once again to another edition of the Let's Fix Construction podcast. This is episode number nine. And this one's going to be a little bit different in that it's going to be a solo voice. It will just be myself. This is Eric Lucier, and my, it's been a while. It turns out, if I look back at the records, fortunately, we haven't had the chance to do a podcast since last September. And ironically, it was on the same exact subject we're going to hit on today, and that's the Construct Show. I really have no real great excuses as to why it's been so long since we've had a podcast, it turns out it was a little bit more difficult to find the time and dedicate to the podcast as I had hoped it was going to be originally, and hence it's been months. But let's face it, time is going by so astronomically fast nowadays. Case in point, my daughter's turning six on Monday, my youngest, and I vividly recall taking a picture at her fifth birthday, and it seems like it was just a few weeks ago. Needless to say, it's been one year later, we're celebrating number six, and here we are getting into another edition of the Let's Fix Construction podcast almost 10 months later. Where has the balance of 2018 and these first seven months of 2019 gone? I'm not quite sure. Being an indoor sports flooring rep, a finished trade, our summer is always the busiest time. Our July... Our Augusts are crazy. This is my 14th year doing indoor flooring, and no two summers have been the same. They've all been absolutely crazy. This one, probably no different. We've been very fortunate that we may not have a total slew of projects that we cannot uh, properly man. It's We've had a proper number of contracts that we're able to properly man. And us, like most small businesses, most construction businesses for that matter, here in the United States, we're suffering a labor shortage. And that's something that we've been battling for years now. So we have the proper crews out there that are able to get us on the jobs as we have them. We just landed a new one this morning that will need to be done by August 31st. And we're starting to see more and more of that as the summers go on. The shrinkage of the duration of project schedule is really, really evident nowadays. And this one went to bid on July 5th, was just awarded to us this morning and needs to be fully complete by the general and turned over by the start of the school year. And that's about a month's time. So we're seeing those more and more often. I'm I'm surprised that this one came in on budget because usually what happens at this course of the summer is if Everyone is generally very, very busy, and a lot of people will throw out numbers very high, and they'll basically say, well, if we get it, then great, we'll make great margins, and as a result, the owners tend to see higher numbers this time of year, but apparently this one uh, went forward, and we'll see how uh, how this one goes. But we didn't want to start off this episode of the Let's Fix Construction podcast talking that way. We want to kind of get back into a normal schedule here, and we may have a lot more solo voices here. We'll see like to get some more guests on this or some guests I should say on here for the time being we're going to ease back into another edition by just going with uh, what I can and what I can control and right now that's a solo voice so for those that don't know my background I actually went to school to be a radio DJ 25 years ago and it's funny because as I listen to terrestrial radio nowadays I always say I hate to hear the DJ drone on and on and yet my last radio shows that I did on radio Uh, commercial radio, college radio, tended to get a little long-winded when I opened the mic, but I also closed the mic with about 45 minutes of music nonstop, and then I'd open it back up and talk for multiple minutes. So the podcast thing is a little bit different, and then you open the mic, and all you're doing is talking. 
Having that solo voice can be extremely difficult unless you are know your stuff and have something to really talk about. I try to listen to uh, as many podcasts as I can. Uh, A lot of the solo voice ones can be pulled off very well if the content is well delivered. And I've kind of held back on doing the solo voice podcast because I always wanted to make sure that the Let's Fix Construction podcast was of optimum quality. The content was always great. The quality, the sound quality was always good and I'm going to do my best on the solo voice to uh, deliver that to you because so I thank you very much for listening and I hope that really I can get back into it here and and talk a little bit more as the um, weeks and months move on throughout 2019 and perhaps into 2020 with some more frequent podcasts some more guests some guests and perhaps maybe even just some shorter podcasts they always don't need to be half hour hour long I like the idea of being able to consume a podcast during a commute And for some, that's just 15 minutes. For some, that's 20 minutes. For those that live around the cities, we know that that can be substantially longer. So it's certainly not a one size length fits all. But for podcasts, the great thing about them is you can consume them at your will, either when you're driving in in the morning or after work on a lunchtime walk, maybe an afternoon walk. Maybe it's when you're at your desk and you're just trying to distract your mind. I've been listening to a a lot of Baseball Tonight's podcast as of late at my desk in the morning just to have something, a good recap of the night before. So uh, there's no real tried or true way to take in podcasts. I think they are gaining in popularity. Uh, there's more and more ways to get, consume them. There's more listeners out there to get them as we're starting to have a lot more data consumption on our phones and a lot more Bluetooth connectivity and easier ways to uh, be close to our devices. It makes it easier and easier to listen to them. So perhaps you're doing dishes, perhaps you're cleaning up after dinner. However, you're listening to this episode. I thank you very much. And I thank you for sticking through. It's been a really long time. Hopefully you're a frequent reader of the Let's Fix Construction blog. That's how this got its start. Every Tuesday, we post something new at letsfixconstruction.com. It's, of course, construction-oriented. It's all about bettering the industry and hopefully writing some misconceptions, some dialing out of some proper ways to do some some certain things that perhaps you do daily that you may found out that you've perhaps been doing wrong. Perhaps you were trained wrong over the years. And that was kind of the premise is why we started Let's Fix Construction. It was meant to be a, a, a positive outlet. Just about three years ago, middle of August 2016 was when Let's Fix Construction.com was launched. The podcast, a lot more recent than that, but no excuse for it being 10 months time. And I don't really want to delve on that too much longer, even though I've hit on that a few times. Thank you very much for sticking with us, for being a reader of the Let's Fix Construction.com blog. Once again, if you have anything that you do ever want to contribute to the blog or perhaps want to volunteer your voice to the podcast, send us an email. Let's fix construction at gmail.com will find its way to me and always looking to publish that positive forward thinking piece every Tuesday at let's fix construction.com. So if you've been a listener or a reader to let's fix construction, you know that we are heavily based in the construction specifications Institute CSI. You can find more information on CSI at CSI resources.org. Org. And I don't want to go deeply into CSI because we've talked and written a lot about that over the years. But I found my way into CSI about 10 years ago now. I'm in my 10th year as CSI and my second term as the Vermont chapter president. And I started attending Construct, CSI's national conference and annual meeting and the affiliated trade show really fortunately 10 years in when it happened to be uh, in Philadelphia. I was living in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania at the time and kind of lucked into uh, really joining CSI and jumping right into Construct when it was in Philadelphia. And I attended as an expo hall walker only, but got to meet a lot of great members of CSI and had a full float uh, chance to go in uh, Chicago in 2011 to the national conference. And I've really been hooked since then. I've attended every one. And 
what I thought was great about going to the national conference uh, with Construct was it was a chance for myself as a product rep, as a subcontractor, to have education into how to best be a product rep. Chicago had a lot of great courses, and I was very fortunate to be an active member of what was then the Allentown chapter of CSI. It's now known as the Greater Lehigh Valley chapter of CSI, and they helped reimburse my way to go. Myself and about six members or so made it out to Chicago to attend, and uh it was great from day one. I was really, really fortunate to have the chance to attend in Chicago, my one and only time that I've made it to the Windy City. And much like all of these other conferences that I've been to over the years for Construct, basically the second I leave the town, I can't wait to return. Well, it's a lot about the conference. It's a lot about the city. And of course, it's a tremendous amount about the people that are involved with CSI. That's really what makes the Construction Specifications Institute so special. And the education that I had as a product rep in Chicago was second to none. It really taught me a lot of great things about how to become a product rep. And I went home with uh, basically a whole bunch of new knowledge, was able to take the CDT not there long thereafter, and uh, just jumped whole hog into CSI. Well, I attended Construct in Phoenix in 2012, and unfortunately, I, I didn't find as many programs that were lent towards the product reps, but I attended anyhow, signed up for a lot of different classes, still got to learn a lot of great things, and I had the chance to move around the nation over the years, always attending Construct, taking in as much product knowledge as I could, building product knowledge as I could. It moved to Nashville in 2013, Baltimore in 14, St. Louis in 2015, Austin, Texas in 16, Providence in 2017, and the last time we did a Let's Fix Construction podcast, we were teasing the Long Beach, California uh, construct that was in uh, 2018 in October. And that was a great one as well. Well, in 2017, I was invited to join the Education Advisory Council for Construct. And what that is, is myself and a handful of different CSI members are invited on to help program the Construct education. Informa, who is the uh, conference promoter that does the Construct show as well as the AIA show and really hundreds and hundreds of trade shows across the world, have generally Education Advisory Council for these conferences, and that's because they're just conference programmers. They're not necessarily construction specialists. Well, they bring in a lot of CSI members like myself, and in 2017, I had the chance to start helping select the programming for the conference that was then in Providence, and I was asked back on for Long Beach in 2018, and shortly after, in November of 2018, was asked to, to continue on my education advisory role and come down to where the construct show will be in 2019 and that's in National Harbor, Maryland and actually view the conference center, meet in person with the Informa team and the other members of the Education Advisory Council and start programming the 2019 conference. It was a great opportunity. It was a whirlwind perhaps 32 hours on site, a dinner, basically a half day meeting the next day and then a trip home. And it was a great way to kick off what's going to be a great conference in 2019. We basically had a whiteboard and we're just throwing a lot of ideas uh, against the wall um, to how we could better the conference and help grow it and grow it in numbers and in prominence. And uh, right around that time, we started talking about how great it would be to continue with the tracks that the education was seeing, something that's more featured towards specifiers, something more featured toward general contractors. And of course, really is at the time, uh, the last few years being the uh, token product rep on the Education Advisory Council, my suggestion and thought was, well, why not a product representative track? We are essentially one fourth quarter of the members of CSI uh, encompass or made up of product reps. So why aren't we programming towards these product representatives and kick back and forth some ideas with uh, Sharice and with the Informa team? And I really lent on them hard and said, you know, I think this is really going to be something that's really well received because we don't have dedicated education for product reps at Construct. There'll be a class here and a class there, but there's not really a, a hit them hard day long segment. So 
we're really, really happy and I'm really fortunate to have some ears that listen to develop the Product Rep University track at Construct in 2019. And before we delve into that a little bit more, for those that don't know, Construct will be October 9th to October 11th at the Gaylord National Resort and Convention Center in National Harbor, Maryland. And it's uh, has moved to the October time frame over the last two years now. You could read much more on Construct at ConstructShow.com. And on the first day, Wednesday, October 9th, it's basically day-long education. There's no trade show floor open at all on the 9th. That's all held for the 10th and the 11th. So the 9th is all education. And in addition to it being the fifth year of the Emerging Professionals slash Young Professionals Day, Uh, This year, we'll also have what's going to be called the Product Rep University. CSI in years past had what was once called the CSI Academies, and they had different tracks for product reps and for architects and for general contractors, and CSI kind of put that on the back burner a handful of years ago, and they haven't had any dedicated education for product reps since then. So based on the history and the success that CSI had then, that was one of the reasons why I really hit Informa hard and the Education Advisory Council hard with the idea of saying there is a need out there for this education for product reps. What better way to kick off a day and to uh, start construct by having a day long track that is focused on product reps. And what this is uh, basically boiled down to are six different sessions that are meant for really any role. Anybody can really attend and participate and uh, listen in on these uh, day long, on the day long sessions. But it's really meant for those product reps out there. And whether you're green, whether you're five years in, whether you're 14 years in like myself, whether you're 30 years in, you're going to learn something. It's much like the CDT for anybody that's gone through CSI's construction document technologist uh, whether it's the training courses or sitting through the exam, you know that it doesn't matter if you're on day one or day 10,001 in construction, you're going to learn something and you're going to learn from your peers and you're going to network and you're going to really come out of it with a lot of great education and really with more of a spark in your day based on the people that you're around and the education that you're around. And So Wednesday, October 9th, we're pretty excited about having this brand new product rep university program, and it's meant for manufacturers, representatives of architectural building products, uh, specialized subcontractors that focus on a building product like myself with indoor sports flooring. We are really an extremely vital component of the construction team. This has always been the wonderful thing about CSI. It doesn't matter your role. We all have that equal seat at the table. Some of us are specialists. Some of us represent many, many different products out there, and we all have something different to offer. And uh, there's many different uh, roles and priorities and parties involved as a product rep and what better way to uh, educate yourself than to come out and join in on this product rep university. So we kind of wanted to program it. I thought what would be best is to kind of start with some general education uh, and move into a little bit more of elaborate use uh, of your day throughout that. So we kind of wrote some uh, some backbone courses and also picked through some of the submissions that some other parties had uh, into the general uh, submissions as an Education Advisory Council member. We got to see all of those as well. So we kind of uh, basically cherry picked some of those and, and help program and write some of the others to kind of curate these six day long sessions. And it's going to kick off with someone that is actually very near and dear to my heart. And that's uh, Mitch Miller, who is a a friend now that I I got to meet down in Allentown. And he was my CDT instructor about nine years ago, Uh, formerly of USA Architects. Mitch has been very active in CSI over the years. And uh, 
we are going to have him kick off the day with a class that's called Discipline Roles and Project Goals. How do I fit in? And it kind of has a basis of the CDT at heart and how you get to learn a little bit more of the different roles of the owner, the architect, the contractor, the consultants and product rep representatives and how they fit in uh, on the day to day project and uh, how to best work with those people. I also want to hope that he gets involved a little bit into the different roles inside of an architect's office as well, because we know there's not just specifiers out there. There's not just architects architect project managers out there. There's, of course, interior designers as well. And I always say, most importantly out there, there's the gatekeeper. If you're not friendly with a gatekeeper at an architect's office and don't know how to deal with them and talk to them and work with them, you're going to have a very, very hard time working with an architecture office. So the idea is Mitch is going to introduce everyone in this hour-long session into the different roles of the project team and how to best work with them. It's going to be a great way if you're brand new to construction industry and build up, building product marketing, you're going to be able to come out of this class and know, you know who are the major players, how do I work with them? What is their role as they're building the overall project? And uh, I thought it was going to be a great way to uh, start the day. Uh, Mitch, as I mentioned, was my CDT instructor. Uh, just a wealth of information. Been in the construction industry for a mighty long time. I won't divulge how much. I'm sure he won't even divulge how long he's been involved. But uh, Mitch is a great individual, has, has invested a lot of time over the years to CSI. And I could think of no one better to ask to start this class, Discipline Roles and Project Goals, How Do I Fit In and the Product Rep University than asking Mitch uh, to get involved. So it's going to be a great way to start the day. Once again, Wednesday, October 9th, the Product Rep University at Construct. After that, we got a, a well-seasoned product rep doing a session called Welcome to the Vendor Jungle, Moving from Vendor to Trusted Resource. And that's being developed by Casey Robb. And uh, it's also going to be uh, presented, co-presented by Paul Collier. For those that know Casey, they know he's uh, always smiles always happy and a tremendous wealth of information. Uh, Casey's been, uh, he's a former president of CSI and uh, always has uh, an ear to offer and his suggestions from his life on the road. And the idea is to how to really move beyond being that traditional uh, product rep, if you will, that door knocker, and how to become the trusted advisor that CSI uh, asks us all to be when you become a product representative. So Casey has been doing this for quite a while himself. So he has years and years of experience that he's going to be able to offer to help instruct you and lead the way for you to how to become that trusted advisor and move beyond just the uh, supplier role and vendor role and be that really important party into the construction project. So that's the second session. It's going to be an hour long on that October 9th from 920 to 1020 in the morning. Welcome to the vendor jungle. That one is called. The next topic is one that we've hit on both on the Let's Fix Construction podcast as well as letsfixconstruction.com and it has to do with specifications and it's perhaps the most important section of the specifications and hopefully one that you're familiar with and you read and that's Division One. This is going to be presented by Ann Whitaker and the class is called Why You Need to Read Division One on Your Projects, The Rules of the Game. Now, our former Let's Fix Construction.com blog that was on Division One and written by Sharice was on Division One and it was called the Project Roadmap because Division One is really that one section that guidelines all of the sections of the project manual. Now, while I specialize in 096566 Resilient Athletic Flooring, Division 1 actually guidelines that section as well as every other. Division 1 is where you go in to find out substitution requirements up front. If your project is not named in the specs, you want to find out how to get in the specs. Well, you find that in Division 1. You also find payment requirements alternates, unit prices, many, many small items that are vital to your bid. If you are not reviewing Division 1, 
You need to now, and you also need to attend this class, why you need to read Division One in your projects, the rules of the game. It's going to be presented once again by Ann Whitaker. She's the principal and senior specification writer for HOK Architects, and hopefully you've all heard the name HOK. So Ann brings years of experience as well into this session and is going to tell you exactly why you need to be reading Division One. If you're not, I implore you to go out and Fish out that letsfixconstruction.com blog post. I'll have it in the show notes for this and listen to our podcast on Division One as well. So we're looking forward to that class as well. And that's basically going to be wrapping up the morning session. That's going to be uh, bring us right up to noontime. And the afternoon starts off with a gentleman that if you were a product rep, you need to know his name and you need to hear him speak. And his name is Michael Chambers. Michael, I've seen speak numerous times at Construct over the years. He offers a unique voice in that. He's a specifier now, but he's also been a product rep. Once again, years and years of experience. If you actually Google how to be a product rep and how to conduct an architectural sales call, Michael Chambers is one of the only people on the internet that actually has published articles. His classes are always well attended. He's got a commanding, wonderful voice. They're always very thoughtful and so chuck full of information. You can't afford not to attend his sessions. And we wrote this one and asked him if he would do it. And he said, yes, we're very, very grateful. It's called Substitutions and Submittals, Not So Dirty Words. So ironically, the last post on the Let's Fix Construction blog was on substitutions. It's a vital component of the product rep industry and one that needs to be followed to a T. I had found a friend, Liz O'Sullivan, had written a previous blog post on it, dug that out, put it back up there. It needs to be read. It was written five years ago. It's still as pertinent today as it was five years ago. And because substitutions and submittals are the vital part that us product reps and subcontractors need to uh, participate in to go to the contractors so that they're showing that they are following the specifications to a letter of the law and using components and products that are a part of the specification. Michael Chambers is going to nail this. I have no doubt about it. Define substitutions. Identify the reasons why a substitution may or can be submitted on a project. Just one of the learning objectives on that. You need to know how to deal with substitutions. Once again, you find that in Division 1, so hopefully you're reading that, and you're following those rules. If the substitution needs to go through a primary bidder, a prime bidder, do so. I never like being that person that doesn't follow the rules. I know that sometimes it co costs me approval of substitution in that I'm going through the proper channel when I have competitors that are just submitting directly to the architect. Then, of course, it's the architect's fault, if you will, that they are not following their own specification that says it needs to go through a prime bidder. They should be rejecting that person that's going directly to them, but many times they do not. So you need to identify how to properly submit a substitution request, including common information and samples needed. Again, one of the learning objectives for this great session from Michael Chambers, it's substitutions and submittals, not so dirty words. And it's going to be kicking off the afternoon, 125 to 225 at the Product Rep University at Construct. One of the other longtime CSI gentlemen that I've been I had a chance to be acquainted with is uh, TJ Gottwald from Allegiant. TJ has been out there as a successful product rep for years now, and he's written a session that's going to be beneficial for any new uh, or novice product reps all the way to the seasoned ones. And it's called Learn from Real Life Lessons and Stories from the Road. So one of the learning objectives is draw from the experience of a seasoned product representative to explore what works and doesn't work and getting specified. TJ knows his stuff. Allegion, a great company, employs many very knowledgeable people across the industry, and TJ but one of them, and we look forward to having him being a part of the Product Rep University and really being able to instruct you how best be a trusted advisor, how to set yourself apart as a product rep in the industry. And we know that TJ is going to knock that one out of the park. It basically is right midday in Wednesday afternoon, 240 to 340. 
And then the last session of the day is a little bit different. And what we wanted to do was kind of hit you with a handful of different pieces that we were not able to deliver in that day. And we're calling it the Power 90 for product reps, greetings, meetings, and more to know. And the first thing that we did was ask a friend of mine, and she's also on the Education Advisory Council, Lauren Anderson, to deliver what's going to be uh, four different 15-minute sessions with five-minute Q&A afterwards in this hour-and-a-half-long session. And she's going to start with use your manners, do's and don'ts of getting in the door. It can be very difficult to get in to talk to an architect. As I mentioned just a little while ago, if you can make friends and learn how to work with a gatekeeper at an architect's office, it's going to go a long way to working with that architect. So that's just one of the topics that Lauren's going to hit on about how to properly introduce yourself to an architect's office and how to best work with firms and companies and get in the door and get specified. So this next gentleman that's going to be presenting is uh, near and dear to me uh, because it is me. No pun intended. Well, I shouldn't say pun intended. So jo jokes aside, networking and social media for product reps is going to be presented by myself, Eric Lucier. Social media is something that I took to about 10 years now, if not longer. Uh, by the time Construct hits, I'll have actually been on Twitter for 10 years, Facebook for more than 10. I've been a, an active LinkedIn participant for many years. And uh, I love meeting new people, whether it's through the net, whether it's in person, which is why CSI meetings are so great. How best to network in person through social media and make the most of your time and how to work with the different players in the construction industry. And it's going to be real hard to boil these down to 15 minute topics, but we're going to do our absolute best. So what's next is another session on specifications. It's going to be presented by Yvette Burns and it's called specifications, how you can help as a product representative. Now, our day job generally doesn't teach us about specifications, but here's something for you if you did not know, if you're a product rep, most architects don't receive training in specifications either when they go to architecture school. So you're not alone. CSI is one of the great resources that can actually help you with specifications, writing them, understanding them, knowing how to work with them. And what we're going to try to boil down in this quick little 15 minute session is how to best work with specifications as a product rep. So this is going to be a great little mini session. And this is going to conclude with a gentleman that I've had a chance to know over the last couple of years from Portland, Oregon, Jake Lamana, and it's going to be called Why Wasn't My Product Used? We all know this as a product rep. You work with an architect. You work with a general contractor. You think your relationship is going great. You think your pricing has been accepted. You think your product has been accepted. But you go to follow up and you find out that the contract has been awarded to somebody else. It's hard, once again, to boil this down into a 15-minute segment. But Jake's going to help us identify how our product wasn't used, why our product wasn't used. And Jake has an interesting perspective. I'm married to an architect now contractor, and he's a contractor as himself on the QA, QC side of things. He has some great insight as to why your product perhaps wasn't used. And that's going to conclude this day-long intensive uh, on the Product Rep University. It's going to be whirlwind. It's six sessions. We could have days on this. Hopefully, this is just year one. And I really hope you have the time to attend. So here's the thing. Here's what you need to do. Pricing goes up soon for Construct. August 6th is the next deadline where pricing for Construct as a whole jumps up another $50. So if you want to save time on your Construct registration as a whole, you will definitely want to jump on this before August 6th. If you're interested in just attending Product Rep University, Here's the deal. It's $415 right now for that day and also for the expo halls on Thursday and Friday. There's not going to be any other project education that you have immediate access to with this pass without doing the full-blown membership. But for just Wednesday's education of the Product Rep University and all the expo hall and all the benefits the expo hall offers you on Thursdays and Fridays, it is just $415. That price does go up on August 7th to $450. But I can tell you the education that you will receive 
for just $415 is going to skyrocket your career, help you with your sales, help you in your day-to-day job, and help you in your career. It's well worth it. There's not anywhere else in the industry where you're able to get this intensive programming from such seasoned individuals that have been doing this for a mighty long time for such a low price. You just need to find your way once again to the construct show. I've been going now, said for this is my 10th year. It's my can't miss construction conference every year. Of course, the benefits, we've talked about it. Podcasts passed blog post pass. It's like the best part of CSI. You've got architects, you've got specifiers, you've got general contractors, subcontractors, owners, engineers, product reps, all in the same room. And that is what Construct is. It's really CSI all-stars, I tend to say, those leaders that have been doing this for 10, 20, 30, 40 years and up that have so much experience to offer, so many ears that will listen to what you have to say and offer their opinion. Everyone makes themselves available to you, and that's one of the things that makes Construct so great. So once again, it's going to be at the Gaylord National Resort and Convention Center in National Harbor, Maryland. If you've never heard of National Harbor, don't worry. I hadn't either until I attended the walkthrough last November. It's basically Washington, D.C., From the Gaylord National Resort, you can see the Washington Monument. You're right on the Potomac. You're right outside of Washington, D.C. itself. Um, I didn't really have the chance to get down to D.C. much before uh, really the last two years. I've now visited a few times over, and I forgot how uh, metropolitan that whole area is. Arlington, McLean, Washington, D.C., all right there. But Washington, D.C., heavily congested, but National Harbor is kind of this new town, if you will, new city that's been uh, built over the years. There's an MGM resort and casino not too terribly far away, Uh, a lot of hotels. It's like this new little mini city, and the Gaylord National sits right on the Potomac. You've got your room blocks all set aside. You're going to be able to come right off the elevator and go right into the conference hall if you're staying right at the resort. It's a great location. Restaurants right on site. You don't even need to rent a car. You can fly in, Uber to the resort, take a cab to the resort. You never need to leave again. Everything is under one roof. And that Wednesday, October 9th, is going to be Emerging Professionals Day. Once again, year five at Construct for those 35 and under. Have a chance to sit through with Sharice and learn all about how we roll at Construct and how to set yourself apart as an emerging professional in the industry. And it's also, in addition to other Construct education courses. It's not just Product Rep University and Emerging Professionals Day, but there's courses, of course, for everybody at day one of Construct. So you can learn more on Construct Show at constructshow.com. And if you want um, to learn more about the Product Rep University, including more on those courses, you can go to constructshow.com forward slash P-R-U for Product Rep University. You can also email me at any time. I'd be glad to send you my two cents, a link, uh, a brochure on it, why I believe you should go, whatever it is. You can email me at letsfixconstruction at gmail.com. I could easily pick apart any single one of these sessions and go into it more in depth, but I have a hard time believing that, as I said, a solo voice, and I didn't want to talk too terribly long. We're approaching 40 minutes quickly on this edition of the Let's Fix Construction podcast, so I want to wrap it up. There's no reason to really talk about it much more other than I implore you, if you're a building product representative, whether you are three days in, 30 days in, three years in, you're going to have something to learn. Heck, if you've been doing this for 14 years like myself, you're going to be learning something out of this. Constructshow.com slash P-R-U. So I hope to see you there on Wednesday, October 9th. And of course, also, hopefully you have the chance to attend all of Construct right through to the 11th. Once again, it's CSI's annual meeting, which does take place on the 11th. Lots of other great programming. The welcome party, the end of the 9th, I believe the CSI night out, which has become the party of the year on the 11th and lots of great education in the expo hall and uh, lots of great people in between. So until next time, which I promise you, is not going to be 10 months from now. Thank you very much for listening to the Let's Fix Construction podcast, for supporting Let's Fix Construction. 
uh, please I've learned a little bit more along the road about how you get uh, found and whatnot on uh, podcasts and iTunes and Apple and what have you. Leave a review, suggest it to a friend, download, listen, talk about it, socialize about it, talk a little bit more about the Let's Fix Construction podcast. You can find it back issues, episodes, if you will, at lfcpodcast.com, as well as on your favorite player, whether that's Apple Podcasts or Google Music, Google Play, whether that's Spotify, Pocket Casts, what have you, and also, once again, at lfcpodcast.com. So my name is Eric Lucier. I'm co-founder of Let's Fix Construction. Thank you very much for listening to this episode number nine of the Let's Fix Construction podcast and you'll be hearing from me again soon. Thank you for listening to the Let's Fix Construction podcast. To hear other episodes, read our blogs from dozens of collaborators, and see where we'll be hosting our next live workshop, please visit letsfixconstruction.com. We're always looking for AEC professionals to contribute their industry solutions. To offer your support as a blogger or podcast guest, contact letsfixconstruction at gmail.com. One, two, one, two, three, four. Let's fix you and me Every broken thing that we can see All the pain and all the misery Let's start tomorrow Let's build you and me A towering impossibility A thing of art, a thing of beauty We can show If it don't matter if it's new or old And we don't have to wait until we're told Let's fix it now before the iron's cold We'll fix it once, we'll fix it thrice As many times till it stays nice A wondrous world this would be Let's fix it, you and me All you see is what cannot be done You'll surely miss out on the joyous fun So come with me and we'll reject no one I trust you know this ain't no joke Let's pull together all the folk And we'll work on life's mystery Let's fix it, you and me